Morning everybody. I'm so excited. I'm going big. I'm going much bigger than some of my recent canvases. Um, I've, I've done some of these Dutch pour blooms recently, which I just love doing. I find them so satisfying. And each time I do one, I think, let's go big. Let's just go, let's do something completely different, go huge. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I've got a, third, uh, a 24 by 30 inch canvas. Um, and I, just to show you the two recent pours, which are, um, I'm going to base this on, um, I've got this pour here, um, which is one of my all time favourite bloom pours. Absolutely love it. I love the sort of the chaos of it and how close all the, all the blooms are. And then I've also got um, this piece, um, which I just finished yesterday, um, which aren't blooms but they are Dutch pores blown by mouth. Um, and what I like about this one is you've got these, these white, really stark white bands of contrast here. So thinking about these two pieces, I'm going to do some blooms, but I'm going to actually do a spiral of blooms. So it's going to be a white base, so have a white contrast in between, um, but then a spiral of blooms over the whole canvas. Um, I have no idea if this will work. It's all in my head. I'm just going to try and get it down onto the canvas um, and just in really beautiful colours. So I'll, I'll show you those next. So all my paints are set up, ready, all mixed. Um, so let me show you. Um, I've divided the colours into three sections. So this is this is one, this is two in the middle and then three. Oh, let me get my scales out of the way. Um, so I've decided to do three different colour blooms um, in on this pulp pour. So I'm going to do one with these gorgeous, gorgeous colours. So Montmartre Magenta, two Pebeo colours, the Iridescent Orange and the Iridescent Violet Blue, and then some Amsterdam Prussian Blue. I think it's Prussian Blue. Prussian Blue Thalo. Um, so for that, so that's going to be one flower. Um, the other, another flower, we've got the um, Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Green Blue, um, Amsterdam Ultraviolet Blue Light, Amsterdam um, Caput Mortem Violet, and then this one, Montmartre Purple. So these gorgeous colours. And then the third colour scheme for the blooms, I've got here, so Montmartre um, Gold, De La Rowney Cerulean Hue, um, Royal and Langnickel Thalo Cyanine Blue, and then Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Blue Green. So on all of these, for all of these three colour schemes, I've got at least one iridescent colour um, because I really love the iridescent flowers, the, the shimmeriness of the flowers. So it's going to be a white base and I've mixed, for my base, I've mixed Montmartre Titanium White with some Oatrol. The only reason I'm using Oatrol on this pour is because I have it left and I'd quite like to use it up. So I've using that instead of the Floatrol. So that's going to be the base. And then all of the colours I've mixed with Floatrol, Flood Floatrol. Um, and I have also mixed some Amsterdam white with the Australian Floatrol to create the cell activator, which is in, in this little pot here. Um, I will put all of these recipes, so for the Australian Floatrol, the Flood Floatrol and the Oatrol, I will list them all in the video description. Um, so I think that's everything, so let's get started. Just one other thing to mention really quickly. This is my Australian Floatrol um, and I get this from Acrylic Pouring Supplies. There's the website there and I'm going to link the website in the video description as well. Um, this, um, the, the owner of this company is a lovely lady called Gillian and she gets the... Um, the Australian flower troll sent, uh, shipped over and then she decants it into these little bottles. Um, so it's not the normal looking flower troll bottle. It's been decanted into smaller bottles or you can buy the large, um, I think it's one gallon bottle from her, um, which has the normal looking bottle. So first of all, I'm going to cover my base with the white. I mixed this a good good couple of hours ago so that it had time to settle so that the air bubbles would all disappear or most of them and I'm going to use my hair dryer to um, cover to so, so blow this out and cover it
Right, I of course got paint all over the floor doing that, but never mind. Right, I think I'm ready to start. So let me show you the vision. <laughs> it's this. So starting off small flowers and then getting bigger and then coming up round here. So I'm happy with the plan. I have no idea how I'm actually going to get this onto the canvas. Just trying to think where I'm going exactly where this will start. Will it start right in the centre? I don't think it will. I think I'm going to start slightly off centre. You might think I have gone completely mad, but I have just mapped out the spiral, the swirl with push pins. <laughs> Um, so it might not make much sense to you, but I promise you there is a plan here. So if you can imagine the spiral starts here and then it comes around here and then up around here. So it, I've mapped it out because if I get it wrong, it will just, it will look so messy. It will look awful. Um, so I know it looks very strange, but there, there you are, I've done it. So I'm now just going to spend ages putting the paint on. It's going to take me quite a long time because I want to do a lot of flowers. So I'm just going to start with some of the, the pink and orange ones. spots of paint um i'm happy so far it's it's um it's interesting um it's as i wanted it to be at this point so um obviously it's going to change a lot now um the some of the puddles have got a lot larger some are smaller that's fine because all the flowers can be different sizes that's totally totally fine um you might have noticed as i was putting down each um group of colors i alternated the top two colors on, on the, all the flowers so this one was the pinks so you can see that I alternated the the pink on top and then the orange on top you can see I alternated the cerulean blue and the gold on top here and then ah see actually the purple sunk that violet that pale violet sunk but I was also alternating the top color on the other two so I've had enough I've not putting any more down I'm going to start blowing on these now so I'm going to do one at a time um, so I'm just going to put a little bit of the cell activator right in the centre and then blow it out. Just one at a time because I don't want it to sink.
Right, I am absolutely in love with this. I cannot believe how well this has gone. This has gone so much better than I actually thought it would or that I could have imagined. I am so, so happy with it. Um, the details and the lacing are incredible. The purple flowers have sunk a lot. But what that means is you've got the really intense blue and pink flowers and then the more subtle white wispy flowers. So I guess it's a bit paler than I was expecting because they've sunk and more the white showing through. But it works. It, I just, I'm just so happy with it. Um, off camera, I just spent a little bit of time blowing around on all probably most of the flowers just to fill in some of these white gaps and also just to try and get a better curve. I added a couple more flowers there. To add to, to the get to better curve and I also added these four here because if I stood back I, I want as it swells around it's getting wider it's getting bigger and I just felt it yeah it needed a bit more so so I'm really happy with that so I'm really now happy with the composition um but what I am going to do is now just tweak the flowers slightly um, and just draw the white in in certain places just to make the flowers look more flower like um, so for example this big blue one um, I'm just going to draw the white in just very slightly in fact I need some kitchen roll but I'm going to draw it in just slightly where it feels like the petals should be not a lot just a little bit because I think it will just make it look more, they will look more flower-like if I do that. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I'm now gonna spend ages doing this to all of them. This has taken me such a long time, but I have loved every single second of it. I don't know if you find this, let me know if you find this. Painting, paint pouring, I'm just in a happy place. I'm just, the whole, the rest of the world is blanked out. It's just me, the paint and the canvas. It might sound a bit dramatic, but it's, it's how I feel when I'm painting. Nothing else matters. So here it is finished. I am so happy, absolutely love it. I love going big, I love big canvases. Um, what I'm loving is just all the different flowers. Um, as I said, they've a lot of them have sunk. Um, for example, here and here and here. Can you see they're very white? And um, they've got beautiful, beautiful lacing, but they're very white. So you've got some just such contrast between all the flowers. Um, so yeah, let me take you in for a close up because it's the close up where you just see the detail. Um, and I'm oh my goodness, I love it. The blue, the, the cells and the lacing that popped up on the blue flowers, I think probably is the most dramatic. Um, I was very surprised by this. Um, it's a greeny colour, the um, Prussian blue thalo. I was expecting it to be just a navy, but I think the thalo bit must mean green because you get turquoise thalo, green thalo. Um, so actually some green with the pink and the orange is just gorgeous. Um, Obviously, green and pink and orange you'd expect to make brown, and there it is again, but it hasn't. Um, I think because I just blow on them in the centre just once or twice, they don't really get much chance to muddy. See, it's very ghost-like, these flowers, that you've got such gorgeous lacing, and you can actually see the colour underneath the white there. You can see where it's sunk. So, as, as I said, that wasn't the plan. That was not intentional but I love it, I'm really happy with it. So I'm just, I love all these different shapes. So they're not bloom like, they've, they've shrunk. You can, sorry, excuse my hands. They, the your color, you can see the paint has shrunk in and in places I've blown it back out again, but they're all totally irregular. The blues definitely are the most bloom like, the most flower like, but then this is my favorite bit. Just look at that pink bit. Uh, I, I blew that out as a circle, as a flower, and it's ended up like that, which just, I think, works absolutely perfectly. Um, and then obviously just more of the same all the way around here. So I hope it dries just, oh, that one looks, that one looks a bit like a butterfly, I think, that one in the centre. I hope it dries just like this. I hope there's no more sinking because it's just, um, it's perfect as it is. I'm so happy.
Um, so I will be back when it's dry. So here it is dry. Um, oh my goodness, I love it. Uh, this is my new favourite ever paint pour that I've done. I am so, so happy with it. Um, it's very different to anything I've done previously. So I'm not a fan of white negative space, but on this piece, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, the details are just amazing. Let me take you in to try and show you some of these, just the cells, the lacing. Um, I'm at a slight angle here to try and show you how iridescent, how shiny some of these colours are. So the gold there, the orange, the pink, the turquoise, um, it ju it's just so, so bright and colourful. Uh, and then, so you've got the colour, but then you've also got the contrast of, of this really subtle bit. Um, and what's really interesting, can you see around the edge, It's there's like a shadow and that's where the paint has sunk and you have that in, in all of the white sections. So it gives a slightly grey tone to it, which again, I just think adds to the, just adds to it. It just makes it more interesting. It almost looks like there's some depth to it. Um, I showed this to a friend and she thought it looked like that the, the flowers were actually coming up, almost like the paint was peeling upwards to create this shadow effect. So I think it gives it some depth. It just makes it look like the flowers are sticking out towards you. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with the colours. Those three different combinations, I think, just work really well. Um, I'd like to do something similar again, but I'd like to use um, Flood Fluoratrol in the base instead of Oratrol. Because after this pour, I do, I've done another one, which I'll upload the video to later, with a, of a heart shape, um, and they sunk again. And then I did a third one, and with Flood Fluoratrol, not Oratrol, and they didn't sink. So I think for some reason, by adding the um, Oatrol in the base has caused the paints to sink a little bit more. Um, whereas if I'd put Flood Fluoratrol in the base and the colours, I think it would be better. Um, anyway, what do you think? Please message me. Please let me know if what you think of it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, I would just love to know your thoughts. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please do subscribe to my channel. I've got lots more um, videos coming out soon. Um, take care. Bye.